So, Digby, in the last hour, we were talking about, um, and, and in some ways, I mean, you know, this is um, this is pretty exciting for for folks like us who, uh, during the Bush administration, we were uh, hoping to push the party uh, to the left, and in many respects, um, it was really just about sort of, I guess, staunching the bleeding. Maybe I'm using the wrong verb there. Uh, and and then I think you know there was also an awareness coming out of the Bush years that. A lot of the people that we thought were our allies weren't necessarily our allies, but in that they shared a um, they shared a problem with uh, with having George Bush as the president. And um, and to a large extent, I think uh, the Obama presidency sorted a lot of that out uh, in many respects. And uh, what was what's interesting to me about comparing this time in 2008 versus, uh, you know, today is that there's a there's a lot more specific proposals and it doesn't look like that necessarily uh, Clinton will be in a position to uh, execute them per se. We, we don't know. But there's a lot more specific proposals that are defining the Democratic Party. You know, it's one thing to say we're going to change stuff. Uh, which is what uh, President Obama did. But uh, beyond the the health care proposal, which was, you know, by obviously a huge uh, proposal, um, there seems to be a lot of very specific proposals that we can now say are Democratic um, uh, positions. And there is still, I think they haven't quite squared the circle on sort of a broader message. But this is the type of proactive message that we've been talking about for years that the Democrats have lacked. And um, I think it's I think it's fairly encouraging at this point. And I think Clinton is going to carry this ideological message into the uh, the general in a way that I don't think she would have if it was a Jeb Bush or or, or someone. I, mean, I think uh, because she has the room to do it now, it seems. Well, that's what I think. Now, you know, you and I are going to get some probably get some blowback on that from people who think that she really wants to enact a cons- more conservative agenda and she's only saying these things to give lip service in the in the primary. I mean, well, we will I mean, see. but she might. She might. She might. Uh, possible, but, but 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 the thing but, that I I hope people understand, I think you know this too is that like it, it's it, she very well may be not saying what she wants to do, but I I watched net neutrality and I don't know what was in Barack Obama's heart about net neutrality, but I know that his promise in 2008 to pursue net neutrality ended up being a huge fulcrum to motivate people to activism that ended up getting us net neutrality. So I don't care exactly. what Hillary Clinton believes in her heart. I don't care. Exactly. I, and we can't know that anyway. So, you know, that's just that's irrelevant, really. I mean, this idea that, you know, well, you know, it's, she feels it in her bones, you know, the neoliberalism in her bones or something. I just I don't care. Even if she does, it doesn't really matter. She's a professional politician and she is going to do, I believe, what, you know, she believes will create a successful presidency as a mainstream Democratic president. Right. And, you know, wherever the mainstream is which right now it's, it's really quite progressive, I think that's where she'll land. Now, you know, that doesn't speak. I'm not, I'm not condemning her character for that one way or the other. I think that's how most politicians operate. Um, I do think, you know, her history suggests that she has, you know, been as liberal as anybody at various times and that she, you know, has not hesitated to carry liberal, you know, progressive messages. I think she's a genuine feminist. I mean, there are plenty of things about her that I think – indicate in her record that, you know, she's, she's certain that she's, you know, conservative in some ways and liberal in others, like most mainstream politicians are. Um, but her, you know, I think that what's happened is, you know, it would be very easy and it must be tremendously tempting. If you, if you were to accept that she's following the Clintonite playbook, the playbook would be, ooh, we've got an opportunity to grab a bunch of Republicans here who don't like Trump. Let's go right, because, you know, let's start talking about tax cuts. Let's start talking about the kind of stuff that those college-educated white people who are Republicans, those people, the Jeb Bush people, you know, those people, let's let's say what they want to hear. And I haven't heard that yet. I mean, I don't know no. what it would be exactly. I mean, maybe it's tax cuts or whatever, but I haven't heard that. And and it's possible that she'll shift dramatically that way, but I, there's there's not been a... A strong indication. I mean, she's had the nomination for months. I mean, I guess the Bernie 
endorsement may have been some holdup, but I don't know. What, did it really make that big a difference in terms of you know, her perception of of her win? Uh, you know, I just don't. I just don't think that that's really going to happen. And I think it's it's really because I mean I just don't think that the actual progressives themselves take enough credit for this. I mean, I you know, I keep saying this, but I think it's true. I mean, I, I it's great that Bernie and Warren and these people are out there now. But you know what? I mean, they got elected because progressives put them in office, right. not because, you know, they were just, you they know. They snuck in and changed right, their... Right, or they had right. some great epiphany five years ago, and re, you know, or two years ago, and realized that they were great progressives. They were put in there because of people who were working hard for years to put people like them in, in, uh, yeah. in office, you know, so... So this is, yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's kind of a missed opportunity for progressives to not, you know, take a little credit here and, 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 you know, maybe give it all to Bernie or Warren or whatever. And, you know, we have this tendency to get into this, you know, great man or great woman theory where, you know, it's all about yes. them and we love them and there are, you know, there are leaders and we worship them and all that. But, you know, that's really not how this stuff happens. They're following us. I, I think that's absolutely, you know, you know, uh, there are times where um, I would critique uh, Clinton and people would say, oh, you're just calling her cold and calculated. I hope she's cold and calculated. I hope she's calculating well, because the uh, the playing field is such, it seems to me, that there's not a lot of Jeb Bush voters out there who are going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, I just don't think that's the case. I don't think that her change in policy is going. Let me put it this way. If they're open to voting for Hillary Clinton, they're going to vote for Hillary Clinton, exactly. uh, despite her policies, and they're going to end up voting down ticket for Republicans because they want to some check uh, on her ability to do anything. But uh, I just don't think uh, that there's a lot of data out there to support that that middle is what it was, if it ever was that. And I think it's clear um, to the Clinton people that the base, this is going to be a base election. It's going to be a yep. turnout election. And that if you're also thinking about two years down the road, if you really want to have the ability to have a presidency that is going to be active, you need to make sure that you have activated people so that they stick around and come out and understand the importance and have a motivation to come out in an off year election. And I think you're absolutely right about this. You know, people tend to forget, like, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and Sherrod Brown in the Senate and, uh, you know, uh, Tammy Baldwin and, uh, you know, and Feingold, I think, could end up back in the Senate and Jeff Merkley. I mean, these people didn't spontaneously grow. Uh, they, they are a reflection of something that's happening. 